Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. Actually, we're getting into evening here at the six o'clock hour. It is September 4th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about the very high heat indexes over the east today, which has been an ongoing trend for at least the past week or so. And since I'm living in Gaithersburg, I have to say, why do I have to live where it feels like it's 106 degrees Fahrenheit? Because this has been kind of an ongoing theme for many of the recent past days. Although we did have a bit of a, a nice break back, uh, I think it was Saturday, where it was relatively crisp, where heat indexes were closer to in the upper 80s, which, which was, was much nicer. But as we've talked about in many of the past video blogs, we have a lot, quite a lot of, of atmospheric water vapor over the U.S. East, and that brings relative humidity levels up, dew points up, and if temperatures get into the 90s, or, or in particular in, into the upper 90s with high humidity, it can feel really miserable, and, and it can be pretty dangerous or for people working outside in conditions where they, they can't get access to a cooler environment or frequent uh, access to water supplies. So for those working outside today, it's, it's just good to do your best to beat the heat, remain hydrated, drink cold, cold fluids, and, and take free, frequent breaks. Now, over the next few days, we expect to see a a trough dipping down. I'm going to go ahead and advance this model. This is a, a misery index model. So it looks like we're going to be seeing at least some, some chance for some respite to, to these extraordinarily hot conditions, particularly high heat index, high misery index conditions for the U.S. East, where it feels like it's, it's above 105. Even, even as we get into September. So I'm gonna go ahead and advance this model. We see that above 100 degree heat indexes in, in parts of the East remain for tomorrow. But for the North, we start to see an influx of cooler, drier air along Northern New York and in parts of Northern Ohio and in through Michi Michigan and in through Western Massachusetts and Western Maine. We don't get much of, of a break here in, in the East Coast, Mid-Atlantic region yet by Thursday, but, but by Friday that there's the, the cooler air does tend to move to the South, even though heat indexes still get into the 90s in, in the Northern states, in, I'm sorry, nor, Northern Mid-Atlantic states, there, there's some relief coming, although as you get closer to the Southeast, heat indexes are still quite intense for a number of locations. And then as we move into the weekend, the, the front has dipped lower with the influx of, of cooler air and likely stormier conditions. I'm just pulling back so we can see the swirl of Florence here lurking to the south and east of Bermuda which is likely to get turned off by this, this dipping frontal zone. So, so just a, a bit of an overview of the forecast for the U.S. East, where the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic, where heat in, high heat index values are expected to dip as, as a front starts to move into the area toward the weekend, according to the GFS model. It's worth noting that temperatures in the Southeast, the heat indexes in the Southeast, are still expected to be quite intense. And just as an overall bit of context, unfortunately, human-caused climate change due to fossil fuel burning and increased carbon emissions does tend to hit the U.S. East pretty hard when it comes to high heat index values and high misery index values and, and related risky or, or increased risk of heat injury and as, as, time, as time advances, if fossil fuel burning continues, it, it tends to look, look rather bad 
with, with the eastern U.S. being one of the regions that, according to models, is the first to potentially experience wet bowl 35C and above readings, which is the, the limit for human heat endurance in the middle latitudes. And we're, we're not anywhere near that yet with global warming in the range of 1 to, one to 2 degrees Celsius above 1880s averages. But, but this region of the eastern U.S. is, is definitely one of the regions where, where high heat index values and high misery index values and high potential for heat injury it is, is, is a bit of a risk concern for human-caused climate change going forward. So just, just some discussion about high heat indexes, high misery indexes for today in the context of the overall trend of human-caused climate change if fossil fuel burning continues, but also a bit of good news because at least for the Northeast and the, the Northern Central Atlantic, there is a front on the way which should provide some relief. Although parts of the Southeast, uh, high heat and high humidity do remain in place. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.